Okay. So I've just rearranged my library area. I wanted to get a little video, document this. This is maybe not f the final setup, and certainly the books are not where they're going to be. Uh, I still have piles of books and books on shelves that I'm not that I'm not especially happy with where they're at. But okay, so this is the general idea. Uh, ignore the messy kitchen visible through there and the messy living room visible through there. So, walking in th from the kitchen, here we go. Hey, there's a reading chair. The sheet is supposed to keep the cats from shredding it. It sort of works for that. Uh, to the left, we've got a bookshelf full of Buffy stuff. Lots of Buffy novel tie-ins. Buffy graphic novels, Buffy tie-in books, The Watcher's Guide, that kind of stuff. And then over here, I have three of these big bookcases in here, full of stuff. There's some comic books in here also, I'm not sure if I'm going to try to leave those in here or not. So, okay, so there's that. And then across the room, look, there's a sword up there. <laughs> so there's that. And these are lots of small bookcases sort of modeled together. I, I think it looks pretty good for just being a hodgepodge of random shelf-like objects that I found and stuck together. All right. This is actually... The reject pile. As I'm sorting through these, uh, I've found books that I have either read and hated, or tried to read and failed to finish, or have never actually read and probably never will. So those will be donated to somebody. See, the, but the problem is, <laughs> let, let me uh, go on a, a slight sideways ramble from just showing you the library. Uh, how do you give away books that you hate? I, I wouldn't give them to friends because I, I like my friends, but I hate these books. So I can't give them a book and say, you know, this is really awful. Here, enjoy. So I don't know what to do with it. I don't even want to, you know, leave it out on a on a park bench for strangers to find because it, it feels like I'm leaving out, you know, a poisoned sandwich or something. Or certainly a sandwich that just tastes really bad. Not that anyone would eat a random sandwich, but someone would read a random book and then they would read something that I, I hated. So, so I'm not sure what to do with those. I will have to think about that. Doot, doot. See lots of David Weber. There's the Laurel K. Hamilton bookshelf of shame down there. I have not a, have not bought a Laurel K. Hamilton book in years and years, but I still have the ones back from when they were good, or sort of good. Uh, exactly the same thing can be said about the R.A. Salvatore books. That's not that's not quite fair. I just kind of got tired of reading R.A. Salvatore books about Drizzt and the Companions. But I I might go back and pick those up if I were to find them in a used bookstore. I might finish out finish out the run. You can see that I, I read quite a bit of Drizzt and Friends. David Drake. Random stuff. I, I'm not sure what's going to go on these shelves yet. Uh, C.J. Shera, and more, and not much down there. Michael Moorcock, Robotech, Piers Anthony, again, wow, I've not bought a Piers Anthony book in at least 15 years, if not longer. Uh, Zelazny, 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 Gail Baudino, if you know who that is. Toot. And just randomness. Um, some some of these things, I mean, are are very eclectic and random. And I only picked up one or two from a given author or series, and never really felt the urge to go pick up anymore. Uh, most of this stuff I've not yet read. This is a to be read pile, sort of. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of books, I hated. That, oh, wow. I made it all the way through, and then I regretted it. 
<laughs> Alright, so I'm not sure what's going to go on with, with this. I really need a lamp to sit here because obviously, and this is with the, uh, the remains of daylight coming in through the door over there, this area is still kind of dark, and even with that, this area is really dark. So here's the back side of that other bookshelf is another bookshelf. And obviously that's really dim. So I don't know don't know what to do about that. I I thought about just putting a lamp up here to turn on when I wanted to, but it won't reach the the power socket, not quite. So I I think another lamp in here is required. There's a shelf of shadow run stuff if you can read that. Uh, there's there's a series that I didn't finish and don't have any real urge to. Some Stephen R. Wild Cards. Now there's a series that's actually still going strong and I look forward to the new uh, book coming out at the end of the year. There's Charles DeLint. Charles, I, I guess this is going to turn into a commentary on, on authors that I read. Because Charles DeLint is interesting. He that's someone who who is stunningly proficient at doing what he does, which is basically uh, creating a character in a paragraph or less. Uh, I, I will often stop when I'm reading his books and just marvel at at how quickly he can draw a character that I can then visualize and relate to. But probably six or more of these books I've not finished, even though I, I enjoyed the first half of the book immensely. Uh, he has a real problem, at least in my mind, with finishing out his story in, in an interesting way. He's great at setting stuff up, and then then it just sort of trails off. And I usually, by the time I get to the last few chapters, I usually find myself just not caring. Uh, I, and I, I honestly wonder if that's what I'm afraid of in my own stories, and that's why I tend to not finish a lot of stories, is because I love this setup, and I love, you know, the, the beginning and the middle of a story, and then at the end, when it turns into crunch time, and you have to wrap things up in a really satisfying and awesome and profound way, uh, I'm afraid I can't deliver on that. So, yeah, I, I feel for Charles. Um, certainly he doesn't need my sympathy because he's, he's got a lot more books published than I've got there, uh, and is probably doing pretty well for himself, but, but yeah, that's a problem I've run into. I, I guess I like his short stories better because he, he carries through a short story, uh, usually very well, and so it, it's probably a good thing that he does lots of collections of short stories, but, um, but his novels... You, I, I, I go through this weird thing of completely loving them, and then at the end that has evaporated, and, and it's just meh. And I put it on the shelf and don't really regret. Look! Well, no, that's not fair. <laughs> I was going to say, look, here's a bookmark it, it, towards the end of one that's been there for, like, years, but this is a, a collection of short stories, so that doesn't even count. Uh, as is that. Okay, but I, I do tend to to run out of bookmarks, and I think that's probably because there are bookmarks in about 50 of these books. Okay, so there's some old Trek and McCaffrey. Obviously, you should be in a in a place of honor and not towards the bottom of this random shelf back in the corner. So I might give her some of the better shelves across the room. Mercedes Lackey. Harry Potter sh certainly shouldn't be on the bottom shelf. Maybe not the top shelf. But, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. Not down there with the dust bunnies. Uh, yeah, that's that's a long sword. Sorry. Um, oh, there's... I, should, I guess I should show you that. Ooh. And there's some random artworks. Some of you uh, RPG geeks might recognize that print. Uh, S.M. Sterling. Love that guy's stuff. Uh, I just haven't had the time to keep up with this series. The Dies the Fire stuff. Or the... Um, Wow. I guess the Emberverse is the name of that that storyline that's actually used. Uh, I, I love these books like crazy, but 
Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually gotten around to reading this last one, and there's at least one more past that that's out, possibly two. So I just need to find the time to read those. And lots of other stuff here. Some I see. Whew, I haven't finished uh, Robert Jordan's series either. I need to do that at some point. Just random stuff. All right, and there's not much, not much in that one of note, really. Eh, no, not really. Not really. Some, I mean, Fritz Lieber, sure. Uh, Fawford and the Gray Mouser, that's classic. But the rest of it is just random, random junk. And Rice, I guess I would, I would classify as random junk. No, not really. I was just seeing if people would get mad about that. All right, so obviously I need to organize things. I actually have plenty of shelf space here, and there's a an old rag here because I was trying to get some dust off of things as I was organizing. Uh, so yeah, for the moment, although a couple of these shelves are doubled up like this, where I've got two layers deep, I probably don't need to do that right now. I've got I've got shelf space. Um, doot, doot, doot. Yeah. Okay. C.S. Friedman. Wow. Here's another case of someone who has a problem, again, just my opinion, with finishing stories properly. Uh, the, the, fir the first two books of these two series were fantastic. In both cases, the third book of the series was not fantastic at all. And kind of left you sad that you'd read it. Uh, and this standalone book... Um, which again starts out very strong and, and keeps building, making you think there's going to be something amazing and profound and, and wonderful at the end. Nope, not at all. Uh, very, very weak ending. Uh, Kim Harrison. Kim Harrison. I... Uh, the, the, these bookshelves, now that I think about it, these bookshelves are full of series that that either went on too long, or I just don't have the patience to, to follow the same character after, you know, volume nine of the series. Um, and I have to say that Kim, Kim Harrison has also annoyed me. Uh, I made the mistake of following her on Facebook, and her endless whining about the, uh, the dispute between her book company and Amazon uh, really showed me a, a very petty side of her that I can't help but influence a little bit, uh, influence a little bit my take on her writing. Um, it's not like Orson Scott Card and his stuff, which I'll never touch because the, the guy is loathsome. But she, she, you know, she's, she has a very odd perspective on, on the entitlement of the traditional author and the traditional publisher versus everybody else in the world. And uh, that was kind of disappointing. So, uh, Larry Niven. Not much to say about Larry Niven. He writes good stuff. Uh, or did. I mean, he's in his 80s now, I think. So he doesn't put out much these days. But uh, certainly back when I was reading his stuff in the 80s and the early 90s, uh, the stuff was pretty amazing. Especially, oh, I don't have a, I don't have a copy here. I think I wore out my copy or it fell apart. Dream Park. Oh wait, I should have. Yeah, I'm sorry. There we go. I got, I bought another one. Dream Park is a, a fantastic book, and the follow-ups, uh, the two that I've read, are both really good. The next one, I think, was only released on Kindle, and I've not read it yet. I, I saw a lot of reviews saying it wasn't good at all, but I've not yet proven that for myself, and I would have to prove it for myself. Okay, lots of Alanine Foster. I, I could want... No, I shouldn't. <laughs> I could say exactly the same thing again. The... Oh, uh, God. But basically, that. That book... Uh, that, that book physically hurt me. And, and that's a shame, because the, the beginning of this series, I was reading... Oh, my God. Back in the early 80s. I was... Yeah... And loved it like crazy, and reread those books over and over and over. And then the, the final book in the series 
was such a disappointment that it, it wasn't even a disappointment. It was, it was like a slap in the face. Oh, wow. All right. So I, I, I imagine not many people were really interested in my opinions and all that stuff. Uh, but I gave them to you anyway. And I, you know, sure, I could talk about books for a long, long time. Uh, especially Zelazny books. There, there's a lot of Zelazny in the stuff I write. Or at least I, I hope there is. There probably isn't really. But but when I'm writing certain things, um, it, if you know to look for it, I, I would not be surprised if Zelazny shone through a little bit. Uh, in much the same way that early R.A. Salvatore uh, very much influences my my writing of action scenes to the point where I actually had people back in the day uh, comment on on it in reviews of my stuff and say, you know, gee, this reads a little bit like R.A. Salvatore as far as, you know, not story-wise, but the, the way the action is, is unfolding. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's very, uh, very perceptive. So, yeah, in the same way as that, uh, Zelazny, who never met a powerful yet down-to-earth demigod that he didn't like. Uh, my tendency to write uh, powerful but down-to-earth demigoddesses, you know, be they slayers or uh, people taking on the aspect of a Norse goddess or what have you, uh, that's a that's certainly a theme in my stuff, as as his stuff had a theme going through a lot of it, too. Not all of it. I mean, he, he went off in weird directions sometimes, but... Yep, yep, yep. All right, so that's what it looks like now, and uh, I I might do another another video walkthrough at some point when I have things organized a little better. Uh, uh, see that? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I suppose if I wanted to do, to do book reviews, I should actually sit down and talk about. A, a book at, at length, but uh, that, that's for a later time, if at all. Um, as far as comics go, excellent. Can't say enough good things about Empowered. Alright. So that's just, and of course there's, there's random things in here. That's just a stick, if you were wondering. It's just a stick. There's a story behind this stick. I, I will not relate that at this time, but uh, suffice to say, that stick has been around for 25 years at least. And, uh, yep. <laughs> Alright. So, I don't know, maybe I should pick out a couple of books and, and do a, a rambly talk about the book sort of, uh, sort of deal at some point. I might do that. I'll think about it. I, I could absolutely, as I said, pick out a Zelazny book or two and ramble on about it for quite a while. Um, yep. Yep, yep. Alright. Okay, so there's that. <laughs>